Sometimes my clients ask me why I became a personal injury attorney. I answer that question by taking them back to my late teens and telling them about a motorcycle accident that I was involved in. I was a passenger on a friend's motorcycle. I was an innocent victim. I ended up landing on my head. My helmet shattered and landed on a neighbor's porch. The ambulance came, they placed me on a backboard and rushed me to the hospital. It was a very frightening experience for me. I went to my trusted doctor afterwards who said I was fine. And even though over the weeks and months I kept complaining of serious pain, I kept being told I was fine. From what I remember and what my parents told me, the auto insurance company was very short with them and somehow convinced them to take a very small settlement. To this day, 20 some years later, I still have health problems. 20 some years later. When I became a lawyer, I heard family and friends tell me the same story over and over about how they were being treated by the auto insurance companies, by the health insurance companies, and even by their doctors who played down their injuries and were slow to take action to properly diagnose them and treat them. I saw an opportunity to make a good living and also to help others whose interests were not being protected in their time of need. In my case, my rights weren't protected. I don't want what happened to me to happen to you. And that's why I'm a personal injury lawyer, to protect you and to protect those you love. When personal injury clients ask for my advice, either I or one of the lawyers that work for me make sure we talk about the big picture. Now what's the big picture? The big picture are the players of the game. My personal feeling is that if my clients understand who the players of the game are, then they're better able to protect themselves from these organizations, and they're better able to understand the role of the lawyer. Now, the role of the lawyer is much more than just getting them money. It's about protecting you, protecting you from these organizations, each that have their own agenda. The auto insurance company is the first player in this drama. They usually represent the person who hurt you. Their loyalty is to their policyholder, not to you. Now, the insurance adjuster usually calls you a day or so after the accident and wants you to give a recorded statement. They will say they need it to process your claim, and they may even try to become your friend. They are not your friend. Really, what they're doing is they're getting you to make statements on tape so that they can use it against you later in court. The seemingly smallest thing you say, such as, I'm not that hurt, may come back to haunt you and be used against you to reduce the value of your claim. Now, these auto insurance adjusters may be good people, but they are trained to get you to take a reduced amount of money by, among other things, getting you to make personal statements. So if I can be blunt, can you trust the auto insurance company that represents the person who hit you? Even if you're processing your claim through your own auto insurance company, can you trust them that they're going to give you a fair offer for your injuries? Are they going to guide you to make sure that you take every step you need to protect your rights to maximize your personal injury claim? Come on. Common sense says no. Auto insurance companies are profit-making organizations, and your claim reduces their profits. Remember this, the less you get, the more profit they make. The second group of players in the personal injury arena are the medical providers. If you went to the hospital after the accident, were transported by ambulance, saw your family doctor, had testing or saw a local chiropractor, you were treated by this group of medical providers. Now you might think the medical providers have your best interest at heart, and medically they do. But remember, these medical providers are also money-making businesses, and as such, they want to be paid for the treatment they gave you. And if their bills aren't paid, they can sue you and affect your credit. Also, you have no real way of knowing if the treatment they provided was reasonable or necessary, or if the bills were reasonable. The auto insurance company will only compensate you for treatment and bills that are reasonable. In addition, some medical providers will not even see you if you're involved in a motor vehicle accident. No matter what non-lawyers tell you or promise you, the truth is that you are ultimately responsible for your medical bills. And if a health insurer or auto insurer won't pay them, you may have to pay the bill yourself. The next player or players in the personal injury game is the private and government health insurers. This includes private health insurers like Medical Mutual and Cigna, federal government medical insurers like Medicare, and state insurers like Medicaid. 
You may even have a type of health insurance through your auto policy called medical payments coverage or MedPay. Now, interestingly enough, often one or more of these providers are required to pay the bills, and this helps keep you out of collections. Now, when and how much different insurers should and will pay for bills from a motor vehicle accident is complicated, but a lawyer can assist you with this serious concern. Now, once these different insurers pay and your claim settles, you usually have to repay these health insurers from the money you receive from your auto insurance settlement. If you don't pay them, depending upon the entity, they can sue you, drop you, or even worse. However, there is good news. Many clients don't know that the law sometimes allows you to not repay health insurers. This can put more money in your pocket. A lawyer can help with this issue. It isn't always just how much you collect from the auto insurance company that affects how much money you personally receive, but how much you have to repay to doctors and health insurers. The less you have to repay, the better for you. The fourth player in the personal injury game is the personal injury lawyer like me. Personal injury lawyers are the only group that is dedicated exclusively to protecting your interests when dealing with the other three entities already discussed, the auto insurance companies, medical providers, and health insurers. So how does a lawyer do this? With respect to the auto insurance company, the lawyer collects all the evidence to make sure that you can properly prove who is at fault and so you can prove your injuries are from the accident. They make sure you don't give statements to the auto insurance adjuster that will be used against you later in court in what's called a deposition. They help ensure that the auto insurance company makes you a fair offer, that they consider your lost wages, future medical bills, any kind of pain and suffering that you or your family members have gone through, any kind of permanency in your injuries, any kind of suffering you've gone through from your testing, or from any treatment you've received, and more. So when it comes to the auto insurance companies and their well-trained adjusters, the lawyer gets you money. Now, the auto insurance companies sometimes say, don't get a lawyer because the lawyer takes all your money. Besides the fact that any adjuster who says this is giving legal advice and breaking the law, insurance companies know this is not true on average. If the insurance company offers you this much, and your lawyer gets you this much, and takes his percentage, in most cases, you're left still with more money than if you did it yourself. The issue isn't what the lawyer gets. The issue is what goes into your pocket at the end of the case. Adjusters know that they pay more on average when a lawyer is involved. Actually, one insurance company's training manual actually instructs its adjusters to try to keep injured people from getting a lawyer by being nice to them so they can save money for the insurance company. It's important to be smart about this. If the lawyer or law firm has a reputation of litigating lowball or unreasonable offers from the auto insurance company, the insurance company knows it will cost them more to defend the case in court, and if they don't settle, they can get stuck with a large possible verdict from an unpredictable jury. So it's important to talk to your lawyer about how often he goes to court to fight for his clients, and what are some recent jury verdicts or settlements for your type of claim. Now, of course, there is no bright line rule in this area, but you can get a gut feeling about your lawyer. Is he gonna fight for you, or just take the offer the insurance company gives? In my opinion, if he or she always takes the offer of the insurance company, how does that benefit you? With respect to medical providers, the role of the lawyer is to help you make sure that you can receive proper diagnosis, treatment, and documentation of all of your injuries. Did you know that many family doctors won't even see their patients for motor vehicle accidents, presumably because they don't want to be involved in litigation? The lawyer checks to see that the doctor you see is competent to treat your type of injury. You wouldn't see a massage therapist for a broken bone, would you? The lawyer gathers the reports he needs to properly present your claim to the auto insurance company. A report written by a doctor stating whether your injuries or surgery is from the accident can affect the value of your claim. Remember, you have the burden of proving your injuries exist and that all of your injuries are a result of the accident. The lawyer also helps keep your bills out of collections while you finish treatment and wait to settle your claim. Also, lawyers can sometimes negotiate reductions in medical bills, which can increase the amount of money you receive. With respect to health insurers, we help make sure that they pay when appropriate so your bills don't go into collections. If you don't have health insurance, sometimes a lawyer can give a letter of protection promising payment if and when the case settles. This can also keep your bills out of collections. Also, a lawyer can help you get permission from your health insurance to settle when it's appropriate so you don't lose your health insurance or your rights to future medical benefits. That's a big one. That's something that almost none of my clients have ever considered. Hey, I can lose my health insurance if I don't settle this claim correctly. It changes the whole dynamic of, do I need a lawyer from how much is he going to take from my settlement to, wow, he protected my rights. And in certain situations, 
like when there's not even enough auto insurance, I may be able to reduce or eliminate repayment to health insurers altogether. In general, the less you repay, the more you get. At every turn, the personal injury lawyer's job is to help you prove your claim to maximize your recovery and reduce the amount that you have to legally repay to medical providers or health insurers. It's not always just how much you get, it's how much you keep that matters. One of the most frequently asked questions I receive when meeting with a potential client is, do I have a case? I use a three-pronged test to answer that question. First, is liability clear? In other words, was somebody else at fault? Second, if liability is clear, is there insurance to pay the claim? Either the at-fault party's policy, your own policy, or an auto policy of a family member. Third, is there an injury? Without an injury, there is no personal injury claim. When these three criteria are met, a valid claim exists. Potential clients sometimes ask me, do I need a lawyer? Can I settle the claim by myself with the auto insurance company? My short answer is yes, but be careful. You can settle it, but you may not want to because the consequences can be quite severe. For example, if you're still hurt, how do you settle your case when you may not know what's wrong with you? How do you settle your case when you don't know if you're going to need future treatment? How do you settle your case when you don't know what that future treatment's gonna cost? How do you settle your case when you can actually lose your health insurance if you settle your case incorrectly? If you're done treating, how do you even know the value of your case? Some people ask me, isn't it true, Attorney Claus? I'd be better off without an attorney. Don't you just take my portion of the settlement? And the answer to that is, in the cases I get involved in, no. The question is deceptive in a way because it doesn't recognize that the lawyer does so much more than get you money. So let's deal with the first issue of money. Now, it may be true that if you're not injured and you don't have medical bills, you're probably better off settling it yourself, assuming you don't have future problems show up. A lawyer being involved in that case, which is a sim very simple case, may actually, in a sense, eat up your portion of the settlement. However, when you get involved in cases with physical injuries, the lawyer legally develops the claim so that you receive the claim's true value. Now, the reason the lawyer is able to do that is because the auto insurance companies almost never make you a fair offer in my eyes. Fair offer being defined is what a jury would give. So if the auto insurance company offers you this much and any competent lawyer gets you this much and he takes his portion, you are still left with more than the insurance company would offer you by yourself. Now this is a generalization, but the fact of the matter is that the auto insurance companies know that they pay a lot more when lawyers are involved. This is why many companies train their adjusters to be nice to you so that you don't get a lawyer. In fact, one insurance company in their actual training manual teaches their adjusters to keep people away from lawyers by being their friend. Now the second half of this issue that isn't really understood by people that think lawyers take all the money is that they don't understand all the other things that lawyers do. What do lawyers do? Well, they protect you from the auto insurance company. They keep you from making statements that reduce the value of your case. They document and protect evidence such as witness statements and any kind of damage to your body or your property. With regard to medical providers, they help you make sure that you receive proper diagnosis, treatment, and documentation of all your injuries. Watch to protect you from your overbilling of doctors and help keep you out of collections. They make sure the documentation is in a form that you need to give an insurance company because it is your obligation to prove your claim. With respect to health insurance, Medicare and Medicaid, the lawyer helps make sure that they pay when they are required to pay and to make sure that when you settle your claim, you do not jeopardize your insurance benefits. So a lawyer does a lot more than just get a settlement. So even if you just got the same amount of money, with or without a lawyer, the lawyer is actually very valuable. This is the point that many people don't seem to understand. The lawyer protects you from many groups of people and makes sure you don't step on those potential landmines in the personal injury process. Yeah. 
Many potential clients are concerned with the legal fee charged by the attorney. While this is an important question, and most lawyers charge the standard one-third legal fee for the typical case, I make it a point to tell them that lawyers' fees don't tell a potential client what they really need to know to help ensure that they get a fair settlement. Simply, because one lawyer charges less doesn't mean you're going to automatically get more money. It can depend on the reputation of the lawyer, how hard he fights, how often he goes to court, how good is he at documenting evidence in a form that's accepted by the auto insurance companies, and how aggressive is his firm once he's in court, just to name a few. You see, all this information is kept by the auto insurance companies. And I've been told by adjusters and defense lawyers that they look at the lawyer and say, all things being equal, how likely is it that this lawyer is going to convince a jury to award money? Auto insurance companies pay when they perceive a threat. The threat is going to a jury and having the jury award a lot of money. Now, if the lawyer routinely goes to court and when needed goes all the way to a jury and gets jury verdicts, that not only costs the insurance company money with the jury verdict, but it can cost many thousands and thousands of dollars in defense costs the insurance company can avoid if they simply settle before litigation. It's a matter of economics. I sometimes get calls from potential clients asking me, hey, I was at fault in the accident. Can I still file a personal injury claim? And the answer is no, you cannot file a personal injury claim if your negligence caused the accident, but you may be able to file a claim for medical payments with your own auto insurance company if you purchased this coverage. If you bought rental coverage, your auto insurance company should provide a rental car. Now, if you were cited for a seatbelt, lack of insurance, or something unrelated to causing the accident, you may still be able to file a personal injury claim. The issue is who caused the accident, not who received some citation. Many of my clients are surprised at how many claims they actually may have and how many people they may be able to actually collect money from. For example, in a car accident, you may actually be able to collect money from the person who caused the accident. You may be able to collect from the person who owned the car because perhaps they knew the person driving was drunk or in some other way the owner was negligent in giving them the car. If the person was on the job, you may be able to sue the person at fault's employer. And if the state of Ohio or some other municipality wasn't taking care of the roads properly, you may be able to sue them also. Now, if the party at fault has little or no insurance, you may be able to file a claim with your own insurance company depending upon what kind of coverage you bought. As you can see, there are many possible parties and insurance policies to investigate. And that's why it's very important to have a personal injury lawyer like me take a look at this to find all the insurance, all the liable parties, and to make sure that you collect all that you're entitled to by law. Potential clients often ask me, how do I know the auto insurance adjuster is making me a fair offer, assuming they're coming to me after the adjuster's made an offer? And my answer is, you'll never know. Because what does fair mean? If the insurance company offers you a couple hundred dollars and you're not hurt, that might be fair. But if you're seriously injured, fair is what we can convince a jury to pay you for your injuries, not what some insurance adjuster hopes you'll take to go away. Fair is making sure that tests and medical treatment are paid for. Fair is making sure future medical bills are paid for. Fair means you don't lose your health insurance when you settle. So the short answer is, without talking to a personal injury lawyer like me, you may never know the real value of your personal injury claim, and it's unlikely you'll receive a fair settlement, as we've defined it. Many clients ask me, are we going to have to go to court, or will there be a lawsuit? And they're surprised to find out that the majority of personal injury claims settle without a lawsuit being filed. Now, the way this happens is, of course, dependent on many factors, including the work done by and the reputation of your lawyer. If a lawyer is willing to go to court, the insurance companies know this, and they'll most likely offer a fair settlement. But it's also based upon how well the lawyer presented the documented medical evidence to the insurance companies. Did you know that many auto insurance companies actually use computer programs to help determine whether to pay your medical bills and how much to pay for your injuries? In other words, if medical information is presented in a way that medical billing or claim valuation software can understand, then you get a more reasonable offer, which means more money to you and makes litigation less likely. An 
An important issue that arises in the personal injury context is liability. Now, liability is another way of saying who's at fault and who's supposed to pay. Now, the general rule is whoever's at fault is what's called liable for your injuries, and they have to pay for the injuries of those who are injured. Now, it surprises some of my clients to learn that they have the burden of proof when it comes to who's at fault. It isn't enough that you were injured, but you have to prove that someone else caused the injury. This is where a lawyer comes in handy. We are trained to find and present evidence regarding liability. And remember, just because the police report says you're innocent does not mean that the auto insurance company will roll over and pay you. Additional witnesses, unforeseen circumstances, and policy coverage issues can arise to cause you problems down the road. It truly can be a minefield for those handling these claims alone. My clients sometimes ask me, what happens if the party at fault has little or no auto insurance to cover my injuries? I tell them, we'll need to get a copy of their auto insurance policy and the policy of any family members they lived with at the time of the accident to check to see if they purchase uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage, depending on the case. This coverage protects you from uninsured or underinsured people who caused the accident and injure you. Basically, the coverage requires your insurance company to compensate you for your injuries just like the party at fault would. Your insurance company can then go after the party at fault to get their money back. You buy this coverage. I strongly suggest to all my clients that in the future they purchase uninsured and underinsured motorist coverage for use in future cases if they don't already have the coverage. And oddly enough, as mentioned above, most people don't know that they may be able to collect from the auto insurance company of the family members they live with at the time of the accident, even if they have their own policy of insurance. Now, all these policies have restrictions and limitations, and you never really know if your own auto insurance adjuster is telling you the truth until you see the policies themselves. Is there some way of knowing if you're getting all the insurance benefits from all the sources that you're entitled to? Not without a personal injury lawyer. And that's why you need a personal injury lawyer like me. Let's take a few minutes to talk about property damage. The party at fault or their insurance company is required to either repair your vehicle or to pay you the value of your vehicle if it's beyond repair. Now usually the auto insurance company of the person who injured you has the option to repair your car or to pay you for it. If they pay you for it, then they give you what's called the fair market value of the vehicle. Now the fair market value doesn't necessarily mean the Kelly Blue Book value, but it means they're required to pay you the value for a comparable vehicle in your area. Another question that clients always ask me is where can I take my vehicle to be fixed? And the law in Ohio, as a general rule, allows you to take your vehicle anywhere you want to be repaired. Now, I do tell my potential clients that if you're using your own insurance to fix your car, make sure to check the policy to make sure you are not limited in where you can get it fixed. But for the most part, you can pick any reputable body shop you desire. Most of my clients ask questions about rental cars. They want to know whether they're entitled to one, who should pay for it, how long they can have it, and what kind of car they're entitled to. As a general rule, the auto insurance company for the party at fault is required to either give you a comparable rental car or reimburse you if you pay for the rental car. Now, how long you get the rental car depends upon whether your car is being repaired or the insurance company is writing a check because the car has been totaled. If the car is being repaired, the auto insurance company will normally give you the rental car for a reasonable amount of time while you're getting your car to a body shop and for a reasonable amount of time while the car is being repaired. Now, if the car has been totaled and they're writing you a check to replace your vehicle, usually the insurance company will give you up until you receive the check and a couple extra days to go out and get another car. After that, if you keep the rental car, you could end up paying for it yourself. You also cannot delay getting your car into a body shop while you have the rental car that's being paid for by the other insurance company. Let's take a minute to talk about lost wages. As a general rule, the person who caused the accident is required to pay or repay you for the time off from work. Now this assumes your time off is from the accident. One limitation on this is that the auto insurance company or any insurance company is going to want proof that you had to be off work from the accident and they're probably going to require a doctor's excuse. Without a doctor's excuse, they're probably not going to pay for much of your lost wages. You can't just sit at home taking off work for a year without a doctor's excuse and expect the insurance company to pay the bill. 
Now, some of my clients ask, Attorney Chester, why should I worry about a doctor's excuse? My employer is already paying my lost wages. And what I tell them is, you may actually have to repay your employer the money they've paid out for your lost wages under a short or long-term disability policy. The problem with this is even if you were paid by your employer for time off from work, if the auto insurance company doesn't pay you for your lost wages, the money to repay your employer is going to come out of your portion of the settlement. That is why it's best to always have a doctor's excuse for your time off, even if your employer doesn't require one, to help ensure that the auto insurance company pays for all your time off from work. Now, a lawyer can also help determine if indeed you have to repay your employer for payments for lost wages. Many of my clients ask me, Attorney Chester, why not just settle the case myself and not worry about my medical bills because I have health insurance? The answer I give them is, you just can't settle your personal injury claim and make your health insurance pay for your future medical bills. Now, the reason for this is that health insurance companies have certain rights. And when you settle your personal injury claim, you have to protect the health insurance rights also. Now, you may not be aware of how to do this, but I am. So one of the things that I'll make sure in your claim is that I have permission from your health insurance to settle. What this means is, if there'll be any future treatment, in most cases your health insurance will pay for it. Now there's a nasty little secret the auto insurance companies are not going to tell you. And that is, if you settle your personal injury claim without permission of your health insurance, not only will your health insurance probably not pay for your future medical treatment, they may drop you because you settled without their permission. This alone is a good reason to hire a personal injury lawyer like me, protecting your health insurance benefits. Also, if you don't repay your health insurance, they may sue you. If you are dependent upon Medicare, having a lawyer help settle your claim is especially important. In addition, lawyers can often reduce the amount of money you have to repay health insurers, which benefits you. Remember, it's how much money you keep that matters. Let's take a few minutes to talk about medical malpractice. What is medical malpractice? Simply put, Medical malpractice is a subset of personal injury that involves the negligence of medical personnel, such as doctors, hospitals, and the like. Your burden in the medical malpractice context is to prove the doctor was negligent and that the doctor's negligence caused you to be injured. Now, how do you prove the negligence of a doctor? You have the burden to prove that the doctor's care that he gave you is below the standard of care in the community in which you live. This can vary by city or state. The standard of medical care in Manhattan, New York, may be different than that in a rural town. Now, the statute of limitations, or the time you have to file a medical malpractice claim, is rather complicated. To put it simply, you have one year from the time of the medical malpractice. But what if you didn't know about the medical malpractice until later on? Well, in that case, you would have one year from the time you knew or a reasonable person would have known that there was medical malpractice. Now, there are some more limitations on that, so it's important to contact a personal injury lawyer immediately when you think you or a loved one might be the victim of medical malpractice. And one other thing, in Ohio, it's not so easy to win a medical malpractice claim. There are limitations on the damages in medical malpractice, and even before you can file a lawsuit, you need the affidavit of another doctor saying that there was most likely medical malpractice. Let's spend a few moments to talk about wrongful death. What is wrongful death? Wrongful death, quite simply, is a cause of action for the death of someone caused by somebody else. The wrongful death could be caused by someone's negligence, such as a car accident. The wrongful death claim can also arise from the recklessness of another person, such as with drunk drivers, or the death can be caused by the medical malpractice of a doctor. It could also arise from intentional action like assault, battery, murder, or rape. Now, there's different types of claims. The wrongful death claim actually belongs to the family members of the person who died. The survivor claim belongs to the person who died if they suffered before their death. It's an odd naming of causes of action, I know, but it's true. The wrongful death claim belongs to those who did not die, and the survivor claim belongs to the one who eventually died. The wrongful death claim damages can be very complicated. Clients will sometimes ask me, what am I entitled to receive if a family member has died from the result of someone else's actions? Well, there's kind of a laundry list. The family members are entitled to the medical bills that were accrued before the person died, as well as the cost of the funeral and the current and future losses of that person. If they were a doctor or making a large amount of money, that can really add up and help the family financially. Also, the family can collect any kind of benefits that the family would have received if the person had not died, 
any inheritance that the family would have received had the person not died, any pain and suffering that the family has suffered as a result of their loved one's death, and also what's called loss of companionship, compensation for loss of a family member. How long do you have to file a lawsuit for a wrongful death? In Ohio, two years. If you would like more information or to schedule an appointment with an attorney at one of our offices or at your home, please call 1-800-218-4243. We're looking forward to serving all your legal needs. Thank you very much for your time.